Today we're going to be adding a new outlet and a brick wall. We're using that light switch as our power source. We're going to set the new outlet in the middle of the room or the middle of the wall. Right there, we're marking it out. I'm using that level as, as a guy, just marking it out where I'm going to grind. I'm using a grinder with two diamond blades. And that, that right there, the red thing is a vacuum attachment for the grinder. So it catches almost all the dust because the home is occupied. So we don't want all that in the customer's homes. Because without it, it's a mess like a dust storm. I'm using a good old chisel right there to chisel out all the stuff I grinded. But the grinder can only get in there so much so I'm gonna have to use a drill to make to get in deeper for the box. So the box is about two and a half inches deep. It takes patience to do this box. And right there, I'm just tapping away. You know, this chiseling stuff is no joke. You just gotta chisel away till the box fits in there pretty flush. You don't want the hole too big either, because then it just be rocking all over the place and you gotta add a whole bunch of cement to get it centered and from not moving so much. So what I do, I just make it just right for the box. Not too big or not too small. I use the drill bit to feather out the edges and so it fits in there good just snug and once I got the hole big enough you know, for the box I use the level to make sure we're leveled with the wall and it's not sticking out and right here using the drill to make a new entrance for the wire so you could get the power Here I'm starting to chisel out what I grinded out with the grinder. Yeah, all this stuff is very tedious work, especially with concrete or bricks. Uh, chisel everything out, make sure everything is good so all your stuff fits in there. I had to actually go in deeper here with the grinder so the wire can actually fit in there good because how I had it originally it was sticking out a little too much and I didn't want to have a bump going in the wall once I plastered it so I decided to take a couple extra minutes to make it deeper. That vacuum attachment actually works great though. It covers most of the dust, catches it all for the most part. You get very minimal dust, so I highly recommend you to get one of these handy tools. Make sure to grab your safety glasses as well. Is that concrete be flying all over the place? Here I'm just sticking in the 
wire in the wall and then the new box in there like i'm spraying this so the concrete catches better for the box i'm using concrete to get the box in there good and it doesn't go nowhere might be a little overkill but I always better take the extra step so you don't get a call back that the box is loose As you can see that the hole I did right there for the box is pretty tight and that's good so that box won't go nowhere. You just gotta mess with it a little bit. Make sure it's it's flush straight as well. You don't want a slanted box. Sanding concrete around the sides of the box so it doesn't go nowhere. Here I'm sanding the sides where the old plaster and paint was at. So when I apply the new plaster, it sits flush. And it's not just it's not bumpy when it meets. There's the first pass with plaster. I'm just really trying to fill in that hole. It's not gonna look pretty either, the first pass. It's gonna take like two more passes. But this one's just to fill it in. Make sure to get it in all the way down there. What I used here was a, a hot mud that takes about 20 minutes to dry. Because that ready mix that comes in a box already made it takes too long to dry. And I'm trying to get in and get out. So that's why I'm using the 20 minute hot mud. So this is the end result after the first pass of plaster. You can tell it's not the greatest, but I filled it in pretty good. And now this is the second pass of plaster. It took about 20 minutes for the first pass to dry completely and harden. And this one I won't be using as much, so it'll be a bit faster for it to dry. Make sure you get all the little crevices around the boxes and in the little raceway for the wire. There's the final pass, and this is where you really want to make sure you get all the little holes covered and all that, so you get a smooth finish. And don't worry if you leave any bumps and all that, because at the end you'll be sanding it, so it'll be smoothed out. You won't even know there was a wire there that was ran. I ended up having to paint the wall, the customer wanted to paint it, so that's what we did, just that part of the wall. Here I'm sanding all the mud that I put on. Making sure the wall is smooth. Use your hand to feel if there's any bumps or imperfections. I might have added some mud as well. They had hung a TV on, up there, they just covered up the holes. And before painting, make sure to clean, clean off all the dust off of the wall so the paint catches better. 
And yes, clean up all the dust on the floor. I'm no professional painter by any means, but I get the job done though. Just adding an outlet and brick walls is very tedious work. This this right here, yeah, it took me about six hours to complete and like another hour with the paint. So in total about seven hours. The project ended up being a success. Customer was happy. They were happy they didn't have to hang their extension cord from up on the outlet on top. Now they have an outlet behind so they could put their entertainment center back there and then the wires would be hidden. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you're planning on adding a new outlet in your brick wall, leave a comment down below if there's something you would have done differently than I did. But this is the way I do it and it gets the job done. Along the way, I start picking up new things and start implementing it so I'm more efficient at people's homes.